Welcome to Ignite Interviews. I'm Cindy Donahue. I'm very pleased to welcome to the show Ryan Arnold, who is the Director of Regional Entrepreneurial Strategy for North Idaho College and also the co-chair of the Northwest Entrepreneur Competition. Perfect. I got it that time. You got it. Welcome. Thank you, Cindy. It's good to see you. <laughs> it's always good to see you. You have been involved in our startup ecosystem for a really long time. How did that start originally? Yeah, it's been almost seven years now. So it feels like a blur, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. So yeah, I was the first director of Startup Spokane, which was a program within Greater Spokane Incorporated and sponsored by some of our community partners. So uh, I got the privilege to basically start a small co-working space, um, be the connector facilitator to the entrepreneurs in the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene community, and just do a lot of fun work. A lot of stuff you get to do now, right? So um, it was really interesting to sort of jump into ecosystem building, I guess, if that's the term we're kind of forming around, but um, just trying to help people. And what a cool job it's been to just be in the community, get to help people and help them kind of fulfill and see out their dreams. So it's been good. How did you become passionate about that originally? I mean, it was just part of your job that you kind of took on and started, or was it something you were always passionate about? No. So I was an entrepreneur myself and scared and lost just like everybody else. So (laughs) it was one of those things where um, I had a small company, a single man shop in Coeur d'Alene, and my background is in architecture and engineering. And so I was a consultant uh, for architecture and engineering firms kind of across the Northwest, but didn't have a, a place to plug into or anybody to really sort of talk or, you know, kind of go over the problems of entrepreneurship with. I mean, the Chambers of Commerce and the EDCs and some of these groups out here, um, they have sort of a focus like that. And I think in the last seven, 10 years, a lot of them focused a lot more on it. But back then, uh, we were looking for a home. So it just started off kind of grassroots conversations, doing some things here or there with some different groups. And over time, I uh, got the opportunity to play the director of Startup Spokane and do that role. So I kind of switched from being my own entrepreneur to then getting to help entrepreneurs full time, which has been really fun work. Well, you do so much. And so what is your role um, at North Idaho College, and you also work for the community. So what is what are the two different projects, or how do you kind of balance those two things? Yeah, it's a lot of things. So I got the opportunity, you know, I, I stepped away from sort of this entrepreneurship role about four years ago when I had a kiddo and tried a few different things out in the community. Um, not going back to my consulting role, but trying some other things that I was interested in. And um, through that, actually had a conversation with North Idaho College, who I had you know, a pretty good relationship with um, through some of the things I'd done in the past they were just getting going on sort of this bigger vision of what entrepreneurship could be on a campus and really just needed some help. So I started off sort of part-time and kind of worked myself into, I've been there almost four years now. So it wasn't really the plan or the strategy, but what we focus on is sort of the co-curricular aspects of entrepreneurship. So if you're on a campus, whether it's Gonzaga or Eastern Washington, you're going to have an entrepreneurship program, something in the class. But you typically don't learn entrepreneurship in the classroom, right? It's actually a hands-on experience. And so there's all these co-curricular things, so entrepreneur competitions, maker spaces, um, things like that that sort of surround the educational experience. And you need people to build and lead those things. So that's what I really do at North Idaho College is sort of build the extra, fill in the gaps, and try to figure out what students and community members need. And that's where it kind of bleeds over a little bit. I mean, we focus on... North Idaho College is a community and sort of our five northern counties and have that vision, but we're interconnected to Spokane and sort of this bigger region. So I get to do work with EWU and Washington State and Gonzaga through the work I do at the college, but sort of this sort of mixed role of education and economic development, which is really fun. And it's interesting and something changes every day. So yeah, that's, you're that's really fun. connecting um, entrepreneurship, not just through the college, but then into the community, right? That mm-hmm. really important bond between taking from the classroom into the community and funding and creating something. Sure, absolutely. So okay. a good example where I get to put a lot of hats on is, you know, maybe I'm walk- working with a, an entrepreneur in a classroom, somebody I've met that's taking one of these courses. And it can be at NIC, but I can also meet students at GU or any of these other colleges. And for example, they might want to make something. They have this idea and they don't know where to go with it. So maybe I can connect them to the makerspace we have on campus or with an actual entrepreneur that's in that industry and sort of bridge those things together. And that's not typically the role of the instructor. Um, They're really focused on the educational experience, so you need other people that sort of surround them and help them and make those connections. So that's what I get to do on behalf of the college, but also on behalf of the community. So it's a really fun position to try to make that, I don't know, continuality between the educational experience and the actual launching of a company. 
And you're also, so you're acting as a mentor as well. I mean, you're, it's really, yeah. that's mentorship is what you just defined. I, I suppose. I don't define myself that way. I'm, I'm always looking for mentors sort of in our broader network. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm happy to fill that role as much as I can. So I do work with students sort of on a continual basis as well, which is always rewarding to see them go from this idea or concept and, you know, me not knowing where it's going to go and then see it five, ten years down the road and go, wow, they really made something out of that. And we have a lot of examples in this community from people I saw maybe at Startup Weekend Spokane seven, eight years ago that are now in a full-blown company from those ideas. So it's cool to see that kind of progress over time. And I should also call you Professor Ryan Arnold because now you're teaching a class. What are you teaching at Gonzaga? Uh, Strategic thinking for the Hogan Entrepreneurship Program. So really fun, um, interesting to be running my own class for the first time, uh, building my own curriculum for the first time and doing it just ahead of where I'm teaching it. But also, it's really interesting to work directly with students in that capacity. So I've always been in this role of sort of kind of one step away um, from the students and the student experience. So it's really good for me to put on that hat, too, to kind of see how it's implemented in the classroom so I can kind of use that as feedback. So it's been great. My kids are awesome. Um, they're really engaged learners, which makes it easier for me. And I find kind of the strategic thinking aspect of entrepreneurship really to be an interesting space for me to kind of learn as well, because it's not necessarily my background, but as I think about what's happened in this community, what I think about the mentors and the people that have really implemented strategy over a long time, now I can just kind of pull from those ideas and bring them into the classroom. So it's, it's cool. And you have a lot going on because you are also co-chair of the Northwest Entrepreneur Competition. <laughs> I am. So yeah. tell me a little bit about the NEC and its purpose. Sure. So the, the NEC competition has been around for about 15 years. Um, and it was really started to be this intercollegiate competition because not a lot of our schools had competitions back then. So entrepreneurship as an educational experience is rather new um, in the last couple decades. And so an entrepreneurship competition is that co-curricular sort of aspect. So the community has come together. We started this thing about 15 years ago. Gonzaga hosted it for about the first seven. Um, Then Whitworth University took it over. And I was through Startup Spokane in that program um, on the, I would say, advisory committee. I think that's what we officially call it. And was doing the advisory role for about five years. And Whitworth decided to really pass the baton to somebody else. And this was right when North Idaho College and the work we were doing was getting going. So with uh, the partnership of the Spokane University District and North Idaho College, we came together to really turn this into an intercollegiate competition that's both Idaho and Washington. Um, That represents over 13 schools when we think about Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, and who's up here and around even the Palouse area. So, you know, we've done this. Last year was our first year. Uh, We learned a lot launching a competition during a pandemic. So we went from like this full... Um, in-person experience that you and I and Lars and everybody else were planning out to suddenly having to go online and doing the whole thing on Zoom with over 100 teams. And we survived that. Um, We awarded students money. I think it went rather well. And this year, we're doing all online again. Um, It's just the nature of what it is right now. And we've got 50 teams that have basically made it through the preliminary round and have just entered over this weekend. So we just closed that. And now we've got another two rounds through the spring to get to the finals where we're going to pass out about $44,000. So the idea is a lot of these students have access to competitions in their own school. This is an opportunity to learn again, to get more feedback, um, to present it in a different way, in a different context. Um, That's the continual learning that we hope to provide. And also to compete against peers, which is something that's unique, to have University of Washington students against WSU, against North Idaho College, And I think we formatted it well enough and on an equal platform that they can all compete and do really well. So it's interesting. It's fun. It's just another piece of the puzzle that I think we want to keep alive here in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. And so I hated to see it go away because Whitworth, you know, had to move on to other priorities. So we're keeping it afloat and trying to grow it over time. So the prize money for the NEC, did you just say $44,000? $44,000. That's not a small thing. And so um, how is that split up? So three different categories, um, a traditional business category, a tech or technology category, and then we have an open category, which actually allows for some graduate students or partnered community members to apply with undergrads. And so each category, the top prize is $10,000, sponsored by the Herbert B. Jones Foundation. So um, they've funded a large part of this over the years to keep the top prize money up there. And then we've got um, $5,000 and then $2,000 for second and third place. So that's how it breaks down. Um, That means, you know, we've got nine teams that are going to come away with cash. 
uh, come April 15th. And so that's it's part of the goal um, to make sure they have funding to launch their idea. Free money that's unattached, um, that doesn't take equity or isn't a loan, is hard to come by. And it's also an opportunity to get more feedback and also to connect to the community. So we're trying to make sure that after they're done with the competition, that our doors are open to be those mentors and advisors and to be one step beyond where they might get some help at the school, wherever they're coming from, just so they have a wider connection out there. Do you see the NEC as contributing to innovation in our community in a way that the, these companies would stay here? I mean, the idea, right, for most of us in economic development is um, to try to keep this innovation here. Sure. So have, you, have past winners stayed here, or do you see the NEC as part of that, that effort? Sure. So Safeguard's a great example. I mean, they're an NEC, NEC winner from, I believe, three or four years ago. So we've got a lot of um, traction to, to see that, you know, companies that have done well at the NEC over time kind of get into that ecosystem. They catch another gear. They understand that there's mentors and advisors here. They're not just alone in the classroom. And once their classroom experience ends, their, um, their entrepreneurship journey doesn't have to end or sort of that um, surrounding of resources doesn't have to end. So, yeah, I think that's part of the goal. Um, it's also because it's a wider net, you know, we have University of Washington students and BSU we're working with some of our uh, kind of institutional partners out there. It's not always specifically that, but I think that's what you and I would love to see, right, is yeah. for them to stick around or understand that this community has the resources to provide for them. Um, it is their own journey. It's going to be a hard lift, and entrepreneurship is not going to be easy no matter where you're at. Um, but I think we're trying to make a home for them here. And sometimes this home's right, and sometimes they have to go somewhere else. That's okay, too. I'm a full believer in supporting that vision of they have resources in other places they need to go to make their business successful, right on. We want to support them no matter what. And hopefully they'll come back one day, right? But that's how it works. Yeah, it is what I've seen. I mean, seeing these ideas go through mind to market and then they, they start here and then hopefully they stay here and sure. it contributes to um, to jobs in our region and to just that sense of innovation that we have here in the, in the Spokane, Coeur d'Alene Sandpoint region. Yeah, or the give back sort of mentality as well. I mean, a lot of us that do this sort of work, you know, some of us are lucky we get paid to do this, right? Um, some of us are not, but we're here as mentors and advisors, and we have a lot of great volunteers. And we also are supported by the organizations that got the resources years ago, right? And so it's that full cycle. And that's what I hope for more than anything is that, you know, some of our entrepreneurs that I worked with five, six years ago that now have really caught, you know, traction can look back and go, all right, that helped. And how can I support the next version of entrepreneurship here in the, in the communities? That's amazing. Um, so what do you think it is about either an idea or an entrepreneur that makes them successful? Like what, what have you seen that seems like it contributes to success? No, oh, there's a lot of variables out there. Um, <laughs> I, I think if I was going to put it into maybe one thing, it's not necessarily grit, but it's the understanding you're going to have to have grit. Um, it's the realism that this is going to be hard. And I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, they get in with sort of this idea that, you know, now I'm going to have freedom to do whatever I want. And I'm, it's, freedom's part of that equation, right? But also the control, the responsibility, um, and all the things that you need to be an entrepreneur along the way. And so it's a mix. And some people are really cut out for it, and some need to build and grow into it. Um, I think anybody can be an entrepreneur, but it takes a lot of work. And so I think early on what I saw with entrepreneurs is they, they have an idea, they have a concept, they have some passion, but they forget that this is a long journey, that it's not going to happen overnight, and you have to have sort of that long, sustained effort to get into something like this. So that's the the long short of it, I suppose, is, yeah, it's, it's a lot of things together, but the vision this is going to take a long time and the willing to stick to it. So weathering the ups and downs, I mean, really being yeah. so passionate about your idea that you will stick it out and work that hard. Or, or the willingness to let go of an idea, realizing that maybe that's not the right one, right? And that's what I think has been really interesting. I've seen, and how I always approach is I'm agnostic to what the idea is. I always just want to try to support and find the best resources for that idea. Because I know I've not done half the research that the person across from the table of me, from the table of me has done around this idea, and I've seen a lot of ideas that, you know, in my head, I thought, yeah, I don't know, that's probably not going to fly, actually do really great. And I've seen a lot of ideas that I thought were going to do really good, not do great, but pivot out into something else. So the willingness to be flexible, I think, is 
really critical as well and not have ego and sort of this idea that that was the thing I thought of and that's the thing I'm going to stick with, right? So there's a little bit of that too. So adaptation too. So grit, sure. adaptation, the ability to let your ego go, which is hard for it's anybody, hard. especially when you love what you your idea is, right? They're so passionate. About, entrepreneurs love their idea. They're so passionate about what they're creating. Right, and, and you commit to it, right? I mean, you're basically going to launch a business. You'll probably make a Facebook post. You'll tell all your friends about it. And then to come back like a month or a year later and go, yeah, that was a bad idea, but I have something better from it. I learned along that experience. And that's a harder story to tell. And sometimes I think entrepreneurs and small business owners and all of us get scared to tell that story that, you know what, I made a mistake, but I learned something in here. And whether that's a career path or entrepreneurship, that's part of the journey. So you need to be able to kind of understand that's what you do. So accepting failure and pivoting and seeing yeah, all those next. buzzwords, right? But yeah. it, it's true and it's what works. Yeah. Why do you think that this region in particular, you know, compared to Seattle or Portland or other areas, um, why do you think Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, Sandpoint is a good place to have a startup? Sure. Um, you know, we used to talk about cost of living. That's changing a little bit. So I'm not going to use that. But I would stay, say that um, I really enjoy that the hierarchy here. And I mean that in the, the context of how you can reach out to people. And how as an entrepreneur, whether you're, you're 20 years old or 50 years old, starting out for your first time, can get a hold of people and can get meetings with people. And whether they're in city government or whether they're angel investors or whatever it may be that you need to find those resources, um, you know, some of us, you know, work on this to map it out, to make it easier. But it's really easy to get a hold of people and have that first coffee um, or virtual Zoom meeting right now to sort of have that discussion and I think that's unique still here in sort of these communities where in like a Seattle or a Bay Area, it's so stratified and it's so protected that it makes it much harder. So I still think that's unique for us. And it's something I try to preserve through the relationships I have sort of as the middleman um, between the entrepreneurs and some of the other people in this community that can really help to make sure that we're preserving that uniqueness for us. Yeah, you're not the first person to say that to me, actually. Yeah. And it's that sense of community that you can reach out and call anyone, and they'll most likely take a meeting with you. I mean, there, there really is that sense of community for everyone to mm -hmm. succeed, which is nice. Yeah, and I would love to see over time, you know, we have a very unique community. Um, I've been working sort of here seven, eight years or so. It's a lot of the same players. And so to also diversify that out is, I think, sort of the challenge and that opportunity is how do we make that community bigger? And we have people moving in from out of town that are interested in entrepreneurship. We have new entrepreneurs and we have people that just weren't ready to participate and to give back or to help that are now sort of filtering in. So I think the job now is to sort of expand that and that to make it bigger for everybody. So more mentors, more, more people sure. involved. Yeah. And so if someone was watching Ignite Interviews right now and they wanted to get involved with either the NEC or with entrepreneurship, what, what would you say to them? Yeah. Um, it's always a good time. So there's a sort of rolling deadlines on everything, right? If it's not the NEC, the Northwest Entrepreneur Competition, which happens in spring, um, there's plenty of other events that happen in summer and fall to get in, in kind of involved with. And so never feel like it's bad time, even if I think what I've seen over time is an entrepreneur or kind of a pre-entrepreneur, they're interested in this, but they don't have an idea. They don't feel like they belong. They don't feel like they should be at the table or at an, an event of sorts. And I would say that's not true, that you can always sort of show up and be present, whether it's Zoom or it's listening to podcasts like this or anything else to understand where it all kind of fits and works together and to reach out to individuals like myself or like yourself um, that are here to sort of help and wayfind. So it's always the right time if you're interested in like the Northwest Entrepreneur Competition. Um, it's nwentrep.com. So you can check out sort of the competition and what we're doing there. And yeah, there's plenty of resources to plug into. So, and it, anyone can mm -hmm. zoom in to watch the NEC on April 14th. Yep. So we'll be hosting the whole thing on Zoom. We've got actually um, coming up in March between kind of our second cutoff and our final, we'll have a People's Choice Award. So we'll oh. be promoting some of um, the the top nine that are you know waiting to present finals in April 15th. So you can vote, and that top person will get an extra thousand dollars with that top team. So there's ways to plug in online. It's not going to be the same as an in-person thing, which is a bummer. Uh, it is another <laughs> Zoom uh, meeting uh, or kind of viewership. But at the end of the day, we're trying to at least provide that experience for entrepreneurs. So, yeah, if you're interested in what our students are producing, um, this is a great way to sort of get a, a little bit of a view of what they're learning in their classes and how they're kind of rolling forward with ideas.
Well, hopefully people do tune in. I mean, you and I both know that watching pitches is fascinating. It is. It's fascinating to watch the ideas and how people present them. And um, so for People's Choice Award to get to be able to vote on that too, is really cool. Yeah, it's something different that we're trying to, you know, build some engagement around, you know, another digital platform. And I know we're getting a little burnt out on all that, but at the same time, um, this is the opportunity if we're talking about how to get involved. Um, if you're a potential mentor out there and you want to watch some of these videos, this is a great opportunity to understand where these students sit and what they might need. So view those videos, think about that, and then you can reach out to myself or my partner, Lars Gilberts. We're always happy to build that connection. And it doesn't have to be the students asking for mentorship first. It can be mentors asking to mentor some of these students because they see something interesting that they want to get involved with. Cool. Well, I'm so glad you came down to talk with me about the NEC and all that you do and continue to do for entrepreneurship in our region. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I'll see you soon. Okay. Okay.